just wondered if there's, at this point, if there are any, any questions that anyone would, would like to ask. Do you have any questions? So, like you said, we have families back into that, right? Mm. Uh, this film was filmed like 20 years ago, so this, has the situation been improved recently? No, the, uh, the situation in, in many ways is worse than it was. Oh. Um, they still uh, torture children. Uh, they still execute people. And the situation is so bad that um, I think in the last couple of years, 120 uh, Tibetans have burned themselves to death in protest against what the Chinese government are doing there. Uh, I'd like to add a bit. All the, all, all the reason, I mean, recently, Nick and I went to Tibet, and uh, we saw a, a lot of militarized control uh, everywhere, and the security uh, apparatus and uh, things uh, all over the place, and, and there are huge uh, convoys of military moving everywhere. So all the routes uh, and uh, railways building to Tibet are uh, meant to enable uh, 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 further, further uh, assimilation of uh, the Tibetan landmass, uh, because Tibet has, uh, has lots of resources and lots of uh, potential. It's strategic as well, militarily and, and uh, politically. Uh, the Chinese government and, and its armed forces, military force, uh, wants to use all these uh, uh, routes and railways to send more military ammunition and uh, basically add to the uh, force to uh, assimilate further so that Tibet's voice uh, quietens out and the population the, the, the resistant population gets erased so that uh, nobody talks about it, that kind of thing. So uh, the things are, are possibly worse than they were before. And, and more film is getting out, uh, more film of, of uh, <coughs> because there are more cameras around, more film is getting out of uh, the treatment that Tibet Tibetans have um, at the hands of the uh, uh, the Chinese government. Did you uh, learn that uh, the current uh, uh, constitution is that um, the, the Chinese population uh, relocation into the Tibetan uh, lands uh, is, uh, exceeds the Tibetan native population now uh, tenfold? Whereas in the past uh, uh, there were a few Chinese, now uh, they've relocated so much of the population into Tibet. Uh, in many places, it's tenfold, uh, and uh, Tibet's voice uh, doesn't even work as a little uh, veto. Uh, there's not, there's not, not, not even a veto left, uh, let alone a democratic. Uh, 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 China, yes, but China is not a democratic country. Yeah. It doesn't have a free press. If you go to Beijing now, they think everything. Uh, they're told that everything is fine in Tibet and everybody's happy in Tibet. Uh, but uh, it is all written. written <coughs> Um, according to what uh, the Chinese government says, so they don't have a free yeah. they don't have a free press at all, which is something that we seem to take for granted sometimes. I think. Anyway, any, any other any questions? Yes, yes. Um, not that, because I have just been to Tibetan, and I, I think that the Tibetan people are very happy and uh, they are very So where did you go in, in, in Tibet? Uh, Tibet, I go to many places, from Nasa to some villages, besides. It's just several months before maybe May, this year. Mm -hmm. yeah, but I, I think what I can see is just uh, the superficial things, because uh, yeah. Yes, I just wonder what, uh, what Tibetan people expect from Chinese government. 
you know, uh, well, what I can say is that uh, uh, a lot of the people in Tibet uh, that would have complied with the Chinese uh, would have uh, received a better treatment. Uh, but still, uh, their uh, sort of uh, position hangs in the balance because they can only say so much and do so much. Uh, what I'm actually uh, talking about is uh, mm, uh, some secret uh, control uh, measures. Uh, because recently um, there have been some protests in Tibet. Uh, this is the, uh, this is the uh, democratic expression of the Tibetan nation. And the Chinese government have uh, dispatched lots of uh, secret forces into uh, uh, the various towns uh, to, uh, to arrest all, uh, all the ones that, that they could arrest, uh, uh, who they suspected to took part in the demonstrations and protests. But, uh, 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 I, I appreciate the fact that you, you went to uh, several places in Tibet and uh, got some uh, uh, positive responses from them. But uh, you do have to realize that uh, the most of the Tibetan nation is, uh, is, is uh, uh, they actually uh, are a spiritual nation and, and uh, they, uh, they, adhere, they revere their spiritual leaders. And, they, and that's something that they're, they're legitimately entitled to practice. Uh, these people, uh, it looks like um, the Tibetan people, uh, they do actually object to, uh, to China's uh, uh, control of Tibet and China's assimilation effort, uh, that, that kind of thing. Yeah. But they, want to, they want to use their own language, which they're uh, uh, not permitted to do in schools and that sort of thing. They want to practice their own religion freely. Uh, they want to be able to demonstrate against um, a government, as we are allowed to in this country. But the Dalai Lama himself says that things are changing in uh, in China, but they're changing very slowly. But one of the things that's changing is that uh, a lot of Chinese students are going to the West and finding out about the freedoms that the West have, and going back and talking about them. And things will change, I'm sure, things will change in China. I mean, we've just had uh, some uh, uh, several weeks of uh, interesting diversions in Hong Kong, where people have talked about uh, having some kind of democracy. And, um, you know, they did, you know, it was interesting to see the, the Chinese government's reaction to that. But uh, things, things are changing, and I think uh, education uh, is the best way to do it. And, um, uh, and I'm, I'm very happy to, we, we have, a, at the University of Lincoln, we have a large number of Chinese students, and uh, I, I show this film every, I show the whole film every, every year to the, the students, and um, uh, it gives them quite a lot to, to think about. So do you think that uh, uh, once China engages globally, with the world communities, and uh, uh, then uh, continues to uh, build on uh, uh, humanitarian and uh, uh, com community protection uh, programs. Uh, do you think that, that will uh, lead China to a better future, or that China should uh, uh, desist? Uh, is that the word? Mm -hmm. Desist uh, uh, international. Uh, in sort of what they call interference, where it may not be interference, but the world is concerned about uh, uh, the pe people of the world. So uh, do you think uh, the world should uh, uh, intervene in China's uh, government of uh, uh, their people? Because uh, when China governs uh, uh, their populations, uh, their citizens, it's, it's not just actually a matter of China itself, because it's a humanitarian issue. And, uh, and it's a political issue, and the people of the world have, a, 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 have the right to actually uh, make a, an intervention. So, do you, uh, do you know who that is? Do you know who John Humphreys is? John, John Humphrey. Okay, who's John Humphrey? Who's John Humphrey? He was probably a political uh, scientist, did you? Uh, he uh, died in 1995. He was a Canadian legal scholar and human rights advocate. He's most famous, or famous as the, the author of the first draft of the Universal Declaration on Human Rights. At the end of the Second World War, 
the uh, winners formed the United Nations, and one of the first documents they produced in 1945 was the De Declaration of Human Rights. And this guy, this guy, a Canadian, uh, was responsible for it. And what it says is, we, the peoples of the United Nations, are determined to save succeeding generations from the scourge of war, which twice in our lifetime has brought untold sorrow to mankind, and to reaffirm faith in fundamental human rights and the dignity and worth of the human person in the equal rights of men and women and of nations, and to promote and encourage respect for human rights and for, oh, I've done that, for, and uh, all the nations, the nations of the world signed up for it, and um, uh, including China. Uh, but there's not uh, much sign of uh, respect for human rights in China, which is something which may change. Maybe not in my lifetime, but in yours. Anyway, other th any other thoughts? Any other... Um, any other... Uh, uh, yes? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I've been to Tibet uh, seven years ago, okay. and yes, I have been to several religious cities as well. Uh, the response I have received is that uh, there were two spiritual leaders in Tibet, right? Uh, the people I met, they, they told me that uh, people, uh, most, most of the Tibetan people in uh, Lhasa and around Lhasa, like I went to Lingshu, uh, around these places, they were following the other one, uh, which is not... Uh, is it the two, two Panchen Lamas? Because there was the Chinese Panchen Lama, and the, yeah, the Chinese one, uh, who's a joke, and then there's the, the little boy, the little boy who uh, who has been seized and disappeared by the by by Peking, by Beijing. When I was in Tibet, I see photos of. Yeah, the one that the Chinese government uh, uh, installed after arresting the uh, the original one and. Uh, Placing, placing, uh, placing him uh, uh, in uh, what is it? Well, no, nobody in knows what's happened. To him. Invisibility. Yeah. So, uh, so, so what happened was that the uh, the, uh, the the second the second uh, most important person in Tibet after the Dalai Lama is the Panchen Lama, and the the old Panchen Lama died, and um, under the instruction of the uh, uh, of of um, of the Dalai Lama, they uh, people in uh, in Tibet dis discovered uh, found a new one, but that wasn't good enough for the Chinese government because they wanted to control it. So they seized the boy who was appointed, who was discovered to be uh, recognized as the uh, Panchen Lama, and took him to Beijing, and he's never been seen again. He was the youngest political prisoner, and he's never been seen again. And they they imposed another one. Um, who occasionally makes visits to uh, Tibet, uh, where he is ignored because he's um, he's been imposed by Beijing. And one of the reasons that the Dalai Lama says that he may well be the last Dalai Lama um, is that uh, to avoid the possibility that when the present Dalai Lama dies, that Beijing will try and impose some other. Uh, Putative Dalai Lama on the Tibetan people. Yeah, I'm concerned in your yeah. question. Yeah. You were, uh, yeah. I think, uh, uh, when, you, when you speak to the Tibetan people as a Chinese journalist or uh, an inquirer, uh, due to fears, you will not get a, a full account of what they might actually have in their mind. Uh, to a foreign journalist or to a fellow Tibetan, they will, they will tell some other story. So, uh, because uh, they might see uh, that you're from a Chinese town or city, they'll be wary and they'll not tell you the full story, they'll tell you something else. That's, that's absolutely true. Yeah. Sorry, you wanted to ask a question, yes. Yeah, you said that you left the country at the age of 11, right? Yes. And, uh, it's kind of imaginable that you would want to let you do the country at the age of 11, so I'm just wondering what makes you mom because that's the kind of life, 
Well, my mother, mother was a very mature person who would have gone through uh, the life's most extreme tests. She had to bring uh, four children up. She had to fight with all the village uh, and the uh, community uh, residents who, uh, who started harassing us when our father died. Uh, when they tried to over throw, uh, throw, throw her over the land that, we, that was reserved for us because uh, we were uh, uh, we were classed as a, uh, you know mother was classed as a widow and uh, we were like a, almost like beggars because at that time in, in in that area if a woman loses her husband and the community starts to look down or mistreat that woman they want to take the, the land back yeah, so in that, in that case my mother was going through the very harsh uh, uh, regime there and uh, also uh, she saw something you know, positive in my brother's uh, uh, insistence that uh, uh, he would take me to India um, and uh, place me in a, a much more enriched, uh, enriching uh, educational uh, institution and uh, maybe better development and my mother would have to struggle less and it would, it would all be safe, it would all, be, it would all uh, work out fine. My mother was uh, given that to comfort. And, and, uh, it was going to be very difficult. Um, um, actually, my brother, who, 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 took, who was going to take me along, uh, my mother as well as uh, him, both uh, sobbed, cried for a long time, and, and argued and talked uh, for a long time before before they stopped, started saying, we're not going to talk anymore, we're just going to go to the town and we leave. But Pat's saying, uh, there were four, they, she was left looking after these four boys, and there wasn't enough to feed them. There was a, at that time, people in Tibet and around, in surrounding areas across China, people were actually going through a very bad time. They were very hungry. Um, so the crops were failing, and uh, there was taxation, and uh, the military needed to take lots of the grains and harvest every time. So uh, because China was trying to fight with the tribe to expand and expand on its military and ammunition and everything, uh, as soon as you harvested your crops. Uh, quite a big portion of it went to went into uh, the taxation uh, department. People struggled to feed themselves. So pa Pasang uh, wanted to uh, uh, take uh, Tenzin away so that she would have one less mouth to feed. Uh, he wanted to play the part of the father. He took responsibility for that. So uh, uh, my mother, uh, in, in, because. Uh, my mother uh, knew that we were going we to go through some very difficult experiences, but our uh, uh, brother, uh, he wouldn't let her know that uh, we would uh, walk over the Himalayas and we would uh, go through all these uh, treacherous and dangerous uh, uh, places and that we would be captured by the police and uh, go through interrogations. He told uh, an easier route to my mother. Okay. Are there any other questions at the moment? Yes. Yeah. yeah, I just want to share some of, some of my experience uh, with uh, people from Sudan. I also have a question. So, um, when I was, so I'm speaking from the position of a uh, Han Chinese living in the southern city of China. And when I was in high school, uh, my school has students from actually very young people from Tibet who were sent to the schools in Chinese cities to receive the education so we have. So we are in the same class. Actually we're not in the same class. We were in the same school and they have uh, they have the same curriculum but they have different teachers and from our perspective, they seem to have certain privilege that have a lot of students. And also another story is that I have friends who, after she graduated from university, and she went to Tibet as a teacher to teach the children in Tibetan schools. 
And so these are two of my students that have some connections with uh, people in Tibet. So my question is, uh, could you share some, some of your schooling experience at in Tibet? And also maybe some of the changes that have happened in, in the school situation. Well, uh, you don't know about the school for the last 20 years or something, but, but you were talk a lot by, about the heroes of Chinese communism, weren't you? Uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, teaching about um, uh, what, the, uh, com what, the, what the Chinese uh, revolution did and how it achieved uh, a greater nation and how it won against the uh, foreign powers, how China was actually, uh, 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 you know, was a successful fighter in the world wars and how certain people are, are traitors and, uh, and how they should be handled. This is a standard Chinese text, textbooks. We had to study them and we had to sing uh, patriotic songs and we had to uh, watch patriotic uh, films about heroes for the uh, uh, Chinese army. Mm. Uh, there, there weren't uh, other things that, uh, to choose from in that town. There weren't other things that you could select, Some, something from a, a foreign country which, uh, which would uh, look at China in a different light. Uh, there were only things from the Chinese uh, probably uh, propaganda department. Uh, so uh, uh, that, that was my experience. But um, on the brighter side, uh, um, I was told that uh, although uh, uh, I always uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, you know, could be seen in a in a in a light where uh, where uh, we were a minority in that school, and we would uh, resist, and we would we would uh, uh, not appreciate the forced Chinese education on us. I still uh, I was a good learner. That's what I was being told. So um, uh, that's why uh, uh, you know there was so much forced education going on in Tibet. You know, forced education programs. Uh, People are told to uh, study Chinese and uh, uh, study anything in Chinese, but uh, not use the Tibetan language in, in the uh, in, in, in Tibetan in, in Tibetan schools. Mm. So that's actually a bit unfair to uh, to tell the Tibetans uh, not to study their language or not to include their uh, own language in the school curriculum. It's not fair, but uh, it happens. Yeah, that's very unfair. Mm. You know, uh, in Vietnam, Korea, and when uh, Hong Kong was uh, colonized by Japan, mm -hmm. we lost our language as uh, a people. And then, yeah. I mean, to lose one's language means to lose one's identity. Right? But uh, I think the Chinese government, you know, uh, maybe tried to simply try to eradicate uh, your identity by just, you know, uh, removing your language at all. Mm. So I think that's because I think the way I see China's effort is that it is not a very pluralistic society. Rather, I see it in a uh, in a in a very um, uh, in a in style of uniformity. They want everybody to uh, to uh, to travel in the same direction and work in the same with on the, on the same effort. I speak the same la universal language and uh, I'm not have too many different things because uh, they can't quite accommodate this cultural and ethnic plural pluralism. So uh, that's, what, that's, what's, that's what needs to be discussed actually in China in an in a, in a opinionated uh, forum, but it uh, wouldn't easily happen. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. I know all this and I work in that region in the heart of all the border with China's uh, on this region. And I just wanted to make a comment that I think there's a great diversity of experiences, so it's difficult to talk about the Tibetan people or the Chinese people in this kind of context. And of course, many people have had very, uh, very negative experiences, but there are also people who have been in Tibet who have benefited in certain ways from economic development. Uh, and I think one of the things that people who are leaving in the way that uh, Tenzin did want is the privilege of choosing their own future and knowing what the range of opportunities are, right? And now there are also many people from who left Tibet to settle in India who now return to China and are involved in 
uh, joint business ventures and so forth. So um, basically, before they left, they were not able to uh, have any kind of uh, access uh, to uh, broader connections with the outside world. Uh, but having left, that becomes possible, and then they can put, put together perhaps you know um, uh, different uh, ways of proceeding with their lives. And, and the other thing is that it's only, in a sense, a small percentage of the Tibetan population who's have even been able to leave, and everybody else has had to stay and has had to find ways to live in that, uh, in that environment, and that involves some level of assimilation, uh, but that might not be actually what people want most, as oh, well, someone was saying. And then just my question for you, I, I think we heard in your introduction that you're studying Chinese, Right, and so I was just curious how you made that choice and how you uh, found to, uh, how you to use that skill. Uh, actually, uh, I completed uh, uh, the fourth uh, year of Chinese primary uh, school mm -hmm. and uh, then went to India and actually uh, uh, sort of uh, neglected the Chinese studies uh, a bit because uh, too much it was uh, uh, for the Indian education and the Tibetan Buddhist studies. Uh, but when I came to London, uh, I suddenly realized that there were loads of Chinese people uh, who were uh, uh, who were actually, uh, after a few years uh, of me becoming a normal British citizen, they wanted to, uh, me to, uh, to, a lot of the Chinese people uh, uh, in the North London uh, started seeing the, uh, the brighter side of engaging with you, because they said, uh, if I actually engage with you, and you actually know English so well, and, uh, and if you can uh, manage a bit of Chinese, uh, we go to these various places, and uh, I make a purchase or do a transaction, and you translate and interpret for me, and I pay you. Um, so uh, families uh, in London started to invite me uh, to be part of their uh, network, and a lot of them actually saw the cheerful side as well, come around and uh, have tea with us and uh, uh, cook dishes with us. So it was like a friendship building thing. I saw the bright side of it as well. I could, in many ways, I realized that uh, uh, community was not just a, a politics and, uh, uh, and discussions about you know, economic uh, advantage taking and exploitation. There was a lot more uh, in life than that. I, I was observing how families were building from scratch and how they were uh, struggling in London and carrying forward. Uh, so I saw the good side of um, hanging out with normal, um, pacified, engaging Chinese people who were not, uh, uh, well, who were not standing there saying, uh, uh, are you a minority from China? Uh, why are you opposing our rule? Uh, so I, didn't see, uh, I didn't hear none of those interrogations. So that was the good thing. and. Uh, uh, so so, so uh, Tenzin has been able to make a bit of money, actually, which allows him to pay for his ticket to go back and see his mother, from helping uh, Chinese people in, in, in London. When they go to the doctor, uh, when they engage with uh, the lawyers, or go to the hospital. Uh, he, he told me recently he went to a hospital with uh, a <laughs> pregnant woman, and uh, he, he got mistaken for the father, though he was... <laughs> <laughs> Would he like to come in for the birth? And he said, "Well, no, I'm the interpreter. I'm not the father." So, uh, and the other thing is, which is uh, which is news, is that uh, Basang, the, old, the older brother, um, uh, Tenzin's older brother, has married a Chinese girl who he met through the internet, who is actually uh, from China. She's a, but she's Manchurian. She's Manchurian, and uh, he, he met her through the internet and. Uh, and was able a few months ago to bring her over to England, where she now lives, uh, which is which is great, and he's he's very happy, and so are we because of that. But, um, so I don't think there's any real hard feelings against the uh, Chinese people. I don't think. Yeah, it's yeah. like um, as often uh, you you are down for you know you end up in the worst situations where you would be interrogated and uh, uh, abused and tortured. That, that's the. Uh, that, that, that is like a, that, that is the worst moment you can go through. But uh, in London, there's more safeguard. People have to observe uh, uh, non infringement of people's liberties and civil rights and uh, human rights and uh, political uh, benefits. Uh, people will not interrogate you. I'm, I'm from China, you're from 
too bad. Uh, you should accept me. I'm your owner. I'm your ruler. That kind of thing cannot easily happen without uh, without uh, uh, a proper conference where uh, everybody has to say, everybody has to cast a vote. Uh, we, we, live, we live in a society where uh, civil liberties are observed. So yeah. anything else? Any other? Oh, oh, oh lots. Uh, <laughs> yes. Out of curiosity, is the part of this gate still so, uh, there? Uh, well, they don't use that one uh, so often. Uh, they have. Yeah, they, they, use, they use the other ones. In fact, last year I went to uh, the uh, Western Tibet uh, because I did a trek around Mount, Mount Kailash, which is the holy mountain, which the Chinese are actually putting a, a road around. And then I think uh, next year they're going to charge the... Uh, Pilgrims for going around, um, but anyway, they um, we 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 uh, we we were pit pitching our tents at the at the, the holy lake at the foot foot of the mountain, and our guide said, "Whatever you do, don't point your camera that way, pointing behind him, because there is a Chinese unit there where uh, who were preventing uh, Tibetans escaping there." So don't point your camera there, or they'll uh, come and close us down, and we'll have to move. Um, and actually, that is the route that uh, Pasang used when he first left uh, Tibet and went to the, the monastery uh, before he came back for, for Tenzin. Um, but they've closed it, that route as well. But there are other routes uh, as, as well. But um, we, So we didn't actually tell, him, tell the Chinese anything they didn't already know. And the other thing I'd like to uh, mention is that the, uh, as, a, as a sensitive minority uh, political case, the Tibetan, alongside some of the other uh, ethnic pop populations, cannot leave China that easily on an official document. If China checks against uh, these uh, politically sensitive uh, minority uh, groups, um, they'll probably uh, allow a normal Han Chinese uh, uh, in e an easier uh, exit than they would uh, allow a, a Tibetan or some Muslim person uh, with, a, with a more more wealth because uh, they will realize <coughs> this person when he gets out uh, it will probably cause a bit of a, 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 a vocal uh, sort of a bomb out there because uh, everybody will uh, ask him are you from Tibet or are you from that area uh, can you tell us about what's going on? Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. I just have a quick question. Today's topic is about identity. Can I ask Tenzin what do you think is your identity? Do you think you're Chinese, Tibetan, or a British citizen? Uh, I actually have told many people that uh, I'm a British national, and uh, as a British passport holder, citizenship holder, a British national. But Europe is now uh, integrated into a system where. Uh, it's becoming a super state of its own, European super state, isn't it, Paul? Uh, well, it, it, yes, it is, but it isn't. I promise you. Uh, but it, that's, that's what some people think about uh, yeah, it. I'm, I'm a British point. national, yeah. Do, but do you feel British, or do you feel Tibetan, or do you feel I'm, Chinese? I'm a British, British national, and uh, uh, definitely China at the moment uh, doesn't give me uh, political or uh, any kind of protection. Where, where, where I, in a place where I where, where I'll be in trouble, but the British government will uh, uh, dutifully represent me. So uh, the Queen has said that he, we foreign countries must look after him. So uh, that's important. <laughs> uh, Her uh, Britannic uh, Majesty. So with, with the Chinese person, Chinese family in London, I relate to them and said, uh, I, I tell them that uh, uh, you, you can see that uh, in in London people will say, uh, "What is your ethnicity?" And what is your nationality? In the field where they ask about nationality, you should say, I should say I'm a British national, but my ethnicity is, is uh, I can say, a Tibetan. Uh, but they have something called Chinese or other. <laughs> I'm going to put a tick on other or something. So is there, um, I mean, uh, is there a fine final question? A real scintillating one. <laughs> This is how you shut down questions. <laughs> no, there, there was one question. Thank you, thank you for this opportunity. Um, I, want, I also want to share my experience with the connection with um, people. My middle school 
from grade 7 to grade 12. We also receive uh, Tibetan people from Tibet, Tibet and uh, give them uh, educational, uh, I can see that um, we can, we are like, we educated together. They can share their uh, Tibetan Chinese, uh, Tibetan New Year and we as uh, I'm also speaking from the position of Han people in China, and uh, it's really gave me an opportunity to know Tibetan people because uh, if we don't have this opportunity, I don't I don't make friends with Tibetan people and also know their culture and know their costume and know their uh, thinking. So do you think this kind of educational process sending? Tibetan students to mainland China, to the middle or north part of China is a way of assimilation, or do you think is a, a opportunity for us to for have people to know Tibetan culture, to know them, and also to understand the others, which is a way of towards understanding democracy or something like that. Uh, I have to tell you that um, there are many uh, uh, aspects of. Uh, Look, look at it. Uh, uh, it depends on uh, uh, what kind of uh, leverage you apply to it. Whether the Chinese government uh, sort of uh, instigates on you that uh, you do have to now go to mainland China and study and abandon your uh, sort of Tibetan linkage. You've got to engage in uh, Beijing for five years. Uh, there's another option of that saying, um, do you want to? Uh, 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 study in Beijing, or do you want to actually uh, have the option of uh, doing something else in Tibet to uh, to enhance uh, the, the Tibetan environment, etc. But uh, uh, sticking to your point of uh, whether it's beneficial or not, um, uh, I think uh, it's like uh, education wherever you do it, whether when it's done correctly, with the correct kind of uh, uh, in, in intention. And with a, with a, with, a, with factual it's like a truthfulness, if the information that they're told is correct, it'll benefit the person. But if it's just a false information, uh, uh, it's not going to help the community. And, uh, if they're told wrong things, some I know some of the people are told, and then uh, taken into uh, military participation where they were trained to uh, to engage in uh, trained to maim and kill uh, to, and harm the community. So, um, uh, but foreign, uh, overseas, some of the charitable organizations have gone into Tibet uh, to set up uh, little schools and medical facilities there because uh, uh, they have had a history of non-political uh, 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 non -political non-interference with China. And uh, they, uh, they also have uh, said uh, that they will comply with the Chinese administration. They've been allowed to... Uh, uh, contribute to the building of uh, medical facilities and uh, little schools in, in the rural areas. So educational endeavors are all uh, beneficial as long as uh, uh, they're, uh, they're seen for uh, the, uh, seen for the seen for a good purpose in terms of the region, community, and, uh, and society building. I, I would just like to add that uh, the Chinese government allow uh, many Chinese students to study abroad study in uh, Vancouver, in British universities, American universities, uh, and I would like to know how many Tibetans they allow to, to have the same privilege, and I don't think it's very many. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you'd like to join me in thanking uh, Tenzin and uh, Nick for really interesting discussion. Um, so thank you very much.